Hi guys, I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. Welcome to my channel where you can learn everything you ever wanted to know about urology. So today I am reacting to an episode of Private Practice. This was suggested by one of you guys. So thanks so much for all your support and I'm really excited to react to this episode for you. So I don't know a lot about this TV show, but I do know that it's a spinoff of Grey's Anatomy and it's by that woman, Addison Shepard, I believe, who is an OBGYN and she has a practice that she starts, hence private practice. So make sure if you like what you see today, give us a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you can check out all my new videos. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey guys, we closed early on Saturdays. Brandon got married today, dude. Mazel tov, Brandon. Uh, Mazel tov. Yeah, you can't drink in here, you guys. Um, Hey, your wedding day's a big day. You might not want to be so drunk that you forget it. I'm not drunk. I have a problem. It's my wedding night. And <laughs> Melissa and I, tonight will be the first time. Okay, you're, you're virgins. We figured it was important to make the first time, you know, special. That's sweet. Uh, I'm sorry, did you need something? Well, I didn't want to take a chance, so I took these pills right after we said I do. I was hoping they would kick in by tonight, and they did. But it's it's been up for like three hours. My mother-in-law tried to hug me. Oh, oh okay. okay. How many did you take? Four, maybe five. Mm -hmm. This is the sexology place, right? This is called a priapism, and I actually reacted to another video about priapism. Make sure you check it out. But. This guy took some over-the-counter pills, and there are a lot of over-the-counter pills that suggest that you might have a prolonged erection. Those are less likely to give you an erection because they're usually not FDA regulated. They do, I think, contain a little bit of testosterone or things like that, but off-label. More often happens when young men take off-label prescriptions of either Viagra or Cialis or Levitra or things like that. Those are medications that are actually used for patients who have erectile dysfunction. If a normal person uses them, they are at a higher risk of what's called priapism or an erection that lasts longer than four hours. While he's not there quite yet, he's getting pretty close. So what happens when you have a prolonged erection? You're now losing blood flow to the penis. So your blood is actually in the penis causing the erection, but it's not able to come down. And what happens when you have a priapism? Well, you're now depriving your penis of actual oxygenated blood flow. And this over time can cause damage to the penis and sometimes if it's too long you can have irreversible damage or irreversible erectile dysfunction it can also cause a lot of pain which is what this guy is describing he showed up at an office that's closed typically this is not where i would encourage you to go to if you had an emergency like this you need to go to the emergency room where you can find qualified physicians to take care of this not a sexology office Whew. hello which one of you has the erection Priapism's no joke, fellas. If I don't get that mass down, this boat might never sail again. Oh, you want to walk my plank, Captain? Hey. So unprofessional. Dan? Well, Dan, let me tell you the procedure for reversing priapism. First, I take a long gauge needle and I push it down the head of the penis, and I slowly draw out blood, flush it with saline, and repeat. Still the man, Dan? Now, who has the erection? Nice to meet you. Follow me. She's right, that is exactly the first treatment of priapism. So if you have an erection that lasts longer than four hours, you need to drain the blood. And we do this by placing needles into the penis to help evacuate the blood. Of course, we do a penile block before we do this. So you, that's the only stick you should feel. Then you numb the penis, you place some needles into the penis to drain the blood and sometimes irrigate it with saline. If this doesn't work, sometimes you need to give a medication like pseudoephedrin, which helps bring down the priapism and you can do this every three to five minutes for up to an hour before you move on to next step. Again, this office is closed and it's after hours. She has no nursing support to help her get all the supplies. Where are the supplies? They're just sitting in the office. I, I would just be very surprised if this would actually happen in a closed outpatient office. Brandon. I can't. We're dealing with a ticking clock here. The longer you wait, the greater the chance of permanent vascular and neurological damage. Do you want your Johnson to fall off? 
No. Well, he's a virgin, and it's his wedding night. What's that have to do with anything? I think standing in front of Maria Sharapova with a pitch tent is a little like cheating on his bride. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I'm a physician, and we have a tennis court reserved. Okay, what if, what if I came in if I was there sort of like a chaperone? For his penis? <laughs> Fine, just get his pants off. Uh, Charlotte, I think you might want to uh, change your clothes. It's normal to be embarrassed. I find that young men who come see me do sometimes feel a little bit of embarrassment, but we are physicians and this is something we do routinely. So it is very appropriate though to offer a chaperone when you are doing a genital exam of patients of either sex. So it is nice that uh, he offered to do that, but typically that's kind of standard of care that we offer to have a chaperone in the room. Very often patients say, no, I don't need one, but it is something that we should be offering all of our patients. It is not cheating to show your genitals to your doctor, so please do not think that and do not withhold examinations because you feel that way. Uh, you might miss out on really important things that we would find on exam. Found and waiting. Thank you. You scared me. You scared me. I thought we had left. Charlotte and I had a late walk in. What are you doing here? I had some work to do. It's Saturday night. Well, it's not like there's a lot happening at home. True. What did you do to him? It's not our fault. Don't lie to me. Have a beer. I don't want a beer. Okay, everybody just calm down. No, 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 don't tell me to calm down. This was supposed to be the best night of my life and they've ruined it. My wedding reception is going on right now and there is no groom. I mean, you seem very upset right now. Maybe we can go somewhere and have a talk. Is it true about his thing? <laughs> it's not funny, it's my wedding okay. night. Come on, I'll, I'll take you to your husband. So priapism is not funny. It's very, very scary. It's scary for the patient. It's scary for their partner. Not a laughing matter at all. So I looked up what kind of doctor Charlotte King is. So she described as a sexologist. These are people who actually receive a certification for certain boards, such as the American College of Sexologists International. And these people have to have some sort of degree. They have to have a certain number of training hours and work experience so they can qualify for this degree. And they do work on things such as mismatched libido, difficulties working with your partner, achieving orgasm, things of that nature. Not necessarily medical sex related things. You stuck a needle in his- It's okay, baby, it didn't hurt. She froze it first. And so our next option is to insert a shunt to redirect the blood flow. A shunt? That sounds big. It is. That's what I got. Otherwise, I'll have to de-glove the penis. T-glove? And make a circular incision around the glands, roll back the skin, and squeeze out the blood. Oh, God. Typically, before you'd go on to do a shunting procedure that she's describing, you would actually give that medication I talked about earlier, or phenylephrine, because that is very effective, particularly in patients who've had a short duration priapism or one that's less than you know 12 hours. So in this case, that probably would work quite well. A shunt is a great next option. Very often, these are done in the operating room, although. I think in theory you could do them with the patient awake as long as you had a really good penile block, which it sounds like he does because nothing really hurt him except for the block. So the way she describes it are degloving the penis and squeezing out the blood. That is an option. It's called an Algarab shunt where you actually, uh, you don't need to deglove the entire penis, but you need to get down to the tissue that's congested and open it up. And so you can do that if you're taking the patient to the operating room. It's very effective. business really to be honest with you she could ask are you feeling okay do you need anything but really for her meddling in her personal life that's really not necessary but they're definitely creating some drama here so I'm excited to see what happens Sean's almost in just a few more minutes this is our wedding night and I've ruined it for you don't say that this doesn't work we'll never be able to do it it's not your fault I just wanted you to think that I was some kind of rock star in bed I wanted you to think I was worth waiting for. There's something I need to tell you. Maybe now is not the time. Okay. Now is definitely not the time. I'm pregnant. Well, but we 
We had a pledge. We agreed. Wait, you, you did it with someone else? I have a sharp instrument inside you. If you ever want to use it again, I suggest you stop squirming. How could you? She made a mistake. This marriage is over. Brandon, we can talk about this. Everyone, but... get out now. Okay. Oh, oh. So this is one of the many reasons that having patients' family members in the room with them when you're doing procedures on them is not a good idea. One, because, you know, it's scary to see your partner or family, whatever, whoever it is, actually go through such a scary procedure and it can create some real emotional responses which can then make the patient themselves feel very uncomfortable or scared. So definitely not the right time to bring that up when you have a sharp object in the penis which is trying to drain some blood. Good news, Brendan. Not only are you flaccid, I found no evidence of vascular and neurological damage. Uh, I thought oh, I married the that. Virgin Mary. Turns out I married Mary Magdalene. I know your heart feels broken clean through right now, but if you walk, you might regret it. No, not after what she did. I'm not warm and feelings are, so I'm gonna just tell you this thing, cause here we do that. We tell you things and sometimes it helps you. For the love. Anyway, here's the thing I want to tell you. I was married. Once. I married the first man I truly loved. Thought we had this whole fairy tale thing going on. It was. He was. Amazing. We were amazing. And then he did something. Something stupid, something thoughtless, something mean. Kind of something I was not willing to forgive. So I left him. I left him behind and I went on and I live this whole other life now. And it's good. It's fine. I have a great guy. I'm a doctor. My life is damn near perfect. But every once in a while, I think about that guy. The fairy tale thing we had. I wonder if we'd still be amazing if we were together now. And I'll never know. Because the minute it got hard, the minute it stopped being a fairy tale, I cut and ran. Real life is hard. Real stuff takes work. Real life is sometimes thoughtless and mean. But that doesn't cancel out the love. So if you don't love this girl, walk away. But if you look at her, and you know she's the one, you owe it to yourself to give her a second chance. Wow, that's a lot of drama for one day. First of all, she cannot check for neurologic or vascular damage. We don't have some magical test. I mean, you can do an ultrasound of the penis to sometimes see the vascular flow, but you can't really assess the neurologic or vascular damage right away you need to kind of give it some time and basically it's by clinical report the patient tells you hey my penis is working okay i'm having erections my sensation's normal and that's how you know that there's no permanent damage also there's a lot of oversharing and personal discussions here while i'm all for being there for your patients when they need you and trying to be there for them emotionally it's not my place to give them the advice about who to marry or divorce or not marry i mean that's not my place and that's really a very personal decision that quite frankly i personally don't think that she should be giving advice about but you know for the drama they got to do it so <laughs> hope you enjoyed that today and let me know what you liked what you didn't like and make sure to check out my last video to learn a little bit more about priapism and i'll link that right there as well as in the show notes down below hope you all have a wonderful day and always remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it